Welcome to the Jay Tyner Show, where we discuss all things wealth management and retirement planning. And as always, the goal of our team here at Semax Financial Group is to help you focus more on your life and less on your money. Now, as a reminder, check with your current advisor, planner, CPA, and read our disclosure in the video description below. Subscribe to this channel if you want to stay up to date on all of our new content. And by the way, if you have questions or need a 15-minute free consultation, please visit Semax.com or call 336-856-0080. Hello and welcome. My name is Matt Landon. I'm joined by our resident CFP, Mr. Michael Sellers, and today we're talking about annuities. What are they? How do they work? So right off the bat, Michael, why don't you tell us what an annuity is? Well, an annuity is a long-term financial contract that can provide you with a stream of in income in the future for a, an investment now. Yeah. So what that means is think about a life insurance policy. Life insurance policy passes gives, gives you funds when you pass away. An annuity is going to give you funds while you're living. So it's kind of the inverse there. Now, how do annuities work? There's a couple different ways that annuities work. One of the key things is there's there's two main phases to an annuity contract. There's an accumulation phase, and then there's also an annuitization phase. Now, when the annuitization phase kicks in, that's when you're in payout. The accumulation phase is when those proceeds are growing. Now, how that actually takes place is dependent upon the contract because there's more than one type of of annuity contract. When you think, oh, well, I know about annuities. My, my parents had an annuity. There are different types. It may not be the same. So, uh, some of the different types of annuities, common ones, why don't you tell me about the first few? Yeah, the, the first one is just the most common. It's an immediate annuity. You retire, you're 65 years old, and you put in a lump of money, and it starts paying those income streams or those income payments right away. And okay. the, the next one would be more of a deferred annuity where you put in money now and then maybe let it grow for 10 or 15 years and then start that income stream or annuitization. Now, within those immediate annuities and deferred annuities, those can grow in different ways. And one of the ways is a fixed annuity. Now, a fixed annuity, best way to compare it is to like a CD. You're going to have a fixed rate of return for a fixed time period. So if you have a five-year annuity paying you 3%, Guess what? You're making 3% per year for five years. You already know. Some of them are compound. Some of them are simple, right? So they usually have higher surrender fees than a CD would have, but the off chance is it's going to have a higher rate of return. So there's a trade-off there. Now, on the other end of the spectrum is a variable annuity. A variable annuity, you have no guarantee of, of total safety. With that fixed, it's locked in. With a variable, it's going to vary depending on the returns of the sub accounts or the investments that you invest that annuity into. So you can choose what you want it to be in, but it's going to go up, it's going to go down. You can think about this similar to investing in mutual funds. The value of them is going to vary. There's going to be different costs associated with it. But there's another, there's kind of a sweet spot in the middle. And what's that? That's the equity index annuity. So you have somewhat of a loose tie to the market. Typically, it's an index like an S&P 500 index where you do have some growth potential. It might be capped at a certain amount, uh, but the downside, uh, uh, there's no downside risk on that linked index. Exactly. And, and you may have also heard of this as a fixed indexed annuity because, like you were saying, it grows, but it's fixed. It's, it's kind of like taking steps up a stairs you're locked in. Now, another thing with these annuities, with these types of annuities you need to be aware of is there are different types of riders associated with it. Now, a rider is something that may be free and included with the contract. It may have an additional cost. Some of these riders are going to involve things like a healthcare doubler. These are also going to involve things like long-term care provisions. It could have things like a, a an, an extended income election that's not based off of annuitization. It can also have things like an enhanced death benefit, uh, surrender penalties being waived and under certain circumstances. But usually when there's riders, there's various fees associated with them. And you want to really understand the nuances of how do these riders work within the context of your specific annuity, right? right. Now, uh, taxes. I feel like taxes are a huge question we all got to ask. How are annuities different when it comes to taxes? Well, annuities are tax deferred instruments so that when you put money in, there's no taxes while you're invested in the annuity. So I don't have to pay capital gains every year. Right. It's all tax deferred. Beautiful. However, when you go to take it out, 
if the money was pre-tax or in like a qualified plan, like a 401k or an IRA, then any money you take out is treated as ordinary income. Uh, the other option is if you had it in just a regular investment account, uh, it, it's uh, considered non-qualified, meaning you've already paid taxes on the money that you invested initially. Um, the only tax you would pay is on the gain that you would have once you take it out. But those are also taxed at an ordinary income tax rate. Exactly. Right? And that's also true for beneficiaries. So you don't get a step up in cost basis. Right. <laughs> yeah. So when it comes to taxes, there are benefits to annuities, but you gotta you gotta kind of have to weigh the pros and cons. So this this next one here is: uh, Can you lose money in an investment or, or in an annuity? And and really, when it comes to annuities, there's there's two main risks when it comes to annuities. Particularly if you're in a variable annuity, there's market risk. Of course, you you could, you're subject to gains and losses depending on the market. Therefore, if we're incurring losses in the market, then you could be incurring losses inside of that annuity. Uh, the second way would be insurer risk, where if you have the insurer that's unable to pay out that that contract, that'd be no different than if, if you have a life insurance policy and or, or a, a car insurance claim and you go to Geico and they say, we don't have the cash. Well, there's, there's always that risk. I think something that's notable there is uh, what company are you getting this through? What's the reputation of the company? What's the credit rating of the company? Much like the stock market, there's incredibly aggressive, risky investments. There's much more conservative investments, and you have to make smart choices around that. Now, with that said, is an annuity a good investment? What are the pros? What are the cons? Why don't you walk us through it? Yeah, there's a, there's a few pros. So uh, on the pro side of it, uh, you can guarantee that income for life. So if you're worried about running out of money, you maybe don't feel like you've quite saved enough for retirement uh, and just feel like, hey, if I can invest something and get a guaranteed $1,000 a month when I retire, annuity might be a good option for you because that will guarantee that you won't run out of money. Uh, the it's a set payment that you can you can count on. Um, you can customize it. So there's other, like we mentioned the riders earlier, mm -hmm. you can customize it if you are concerned over healthcare costs and maybe can't qualify for a long-term care policy. There's ways to structure annuity to help you cover that potential cost in the future as well. So those are a couple of the pros that- Now, now what about the cons? This yeah. is all the good stuff. Where's, yeah. where's the downsides? Yeah. The, the downside is uh, there are some, uh, you know, surrender charges, withdrawal right. restrictions, sometimes on annuities. So you have to stay in it for five, seven, 10 years or longer. Um, and so that's kind of a, some liquidity uh, questions around that. If you need a bigger chunk of money, uh, down, you know, within a couple of years, you may not have access to all of it without a surrender charge. Um, and so that's a con. And also, you know, you do participate in the market with a return. I bet it's capped usually. Um, you do have some of the downside protection. And so that that is a, a pro that I should have mentioned as right. well. But um, just you're limited a little bit on the upside and downside, but there's some other drawbacks with it as well. Right. And I would also tack in their complexity. I think yeah. these can be complicated products, and that's why it helps to work with somebody who kind of can walk it through with you and, and help explain what you're doing there. The last thing I would touch on here is annuity fees. Uh, there are a lot of different fees that can be associated with annuities. This is not uh, a complete list of every fee that could be in there. It's also not a complete list of every fee that you're necessarily paying because you may not be paying any fees. There are no fee contracts out there, but things that you want to be aware of are surrender charges. Uh, if so, what's the surrender schedule? What's the time frame? Uh, what's the mortality and expense risk fees? This usually runs about one and a quarter from a fee standpoint, but it varies. It depends on the contract. There's also administrative fees. They're going to charge you for record keeping and other administrative tasks. There's underlying fund expenses. So if you are in that variable contract with those mutual like fund type products, uh, there could be fees associated there. Uh, there's also other features. You may be paying additional fees for some of those riders we had mentioned earlier. And then uh, also there, there could be some tax penalties. So with an IRA contract, for example, if you withdraw before 59 and a half, then you are subject to that 10% penalty, just like any other IRA. Now, when it comes to annuities, I think the key takeaway from here is, is not that annuities are necessarily uh, an amazing product or a terrible product. I think there are a lot of different annuities out there. There are a lot of different features. And the key thing about whether it makes it good or bad is really whether or not it applies for your personal situation. For example, I know some people that absolutely love a Prius, wonderful car, great gas mileage. But if you're trying to load up two by fours at Lowe's, 
not the best vehicle for that. But if you're trying to get the most fuel economy possible and you're driving for five and a half hours, an F-150 is probably not your best choice of action either. So again, what vehicle you use, in this case, what investment vehicle you use, is really going to be dependent upon your situation. If you have questions about that, you're welcome to reach out to us at the office. I know Michael would love to sit down and help with you. So would I. And we have a full staff of advisors here. We hope this has been a beneficial video for you. Thanks for watching.